Howdy, howdy, folks! It's Diecast Buffet here, and it's time to do our NASCAR Thunder 2003 Season Mode Let's Play. I've been waiting a while to get this Elgato, finally got it now, and it's time to do a series. So, I think we should show off the driver we're going to be racing as. It's going to be Jeff Burton. That'll be our car. And um, the schedule I did kind of change up a little bit, I'll show you. I kept it mainly realistic, but I added some elements that I feel would enhance it. So obviously we're starting off with the Daytona 500, then we go to North Carolina, Las Vegas, Phoenix. I moved Phoenix up, kind of like the current modern schedule. So we have that, Texas, yeah we added, I added another Texas race. So we have one in the fall, and then we're going to have one in the spring, much like in the modern times, or not modern, but recent times, Bristol, California, Martinsville, Richmond, Talladega, Coke 600, Dover, Pocono, Michigan, Infineon, and this is where things kind of get interesting. So I added a road course to Daytona, and then we're going to have the normal Daytona race, so it's kind of like a double header, so it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out in the championship. Added a summer Atlanta race, got Chicago, Pocono, Indianapolis, Watkins Glen, Michigan, Bristol, Darlington, Richmond, New Hampshire. We're only going to have one Dover race, and one New Hampshire race, and there's not going to be any races at Kansas. It's something else I did change, and we're also having only one race at Darlington. Las Vegas will be getting a night fall race. This is something that I was wanting them, wanting them to do with the, the, the current you know, Monster Energy schedule. And to see them actually run the, the night, or not night, but the fall Vegas race, it was super cool. It was the idea I had before that. So, they implemented it into this game. I still think the one that they race nowadays should be night, but anywho. Then we go to Talladega, Lowe's, Martinsville, Atlanta, and then Rockingham, and then we're going to have a Texas road course. So we're going to technically have three races at Texas Motor Speedway, and then we're going to have the fall normal Texas race, and then we're going to have Homestead. So yeah, that's the schedule. It's a little bit different. We're going to be racing our normal primary scheme. We do have a few different ones that I will use during the season, but for the 500, we'll just run the normal. So, anywho, let's get into the race. Alright, let's go qualify. Let's hopefully get a good position. I really don't know how fast this car is. Smooth and steady through one and two, down the back straight away as well. If this was a warm up lap, I would be running the outside to give the car and the engine a little bit more time to hit the maximum speed, which appears to be around 179, 180. Sorry, the analog got a little weird there. So hopefully, the second lap will actually be our good lap. So I still feel like the car needs to warm up a little bit, not warm up, but you know, get a little bit more momentum, about to finish lap one in qualifying, there's the final one, and of course, after qualifying, we have the dual races, ooh, jeez, 37, that is not good at all, Let's hopefully we can kind of get a better position on that. 37th is not cool, it's going to be a long race. I believe I have the race uh, settings to 10%. So 10% races, so it'll be about 20 laps in the 500, which isn't too long, and even too short, will allow for at least one pit stop and some action. So, about to see how that goes. Of course, we got to get to the Gatorade duels. Slap was a little bit better. The car is kind of twitchy. I don't like that. We might have to adjust that. The car is really twitchy. Let's see what position we get. 36th. Oh, goodness. That is not good at all, folks. 
Yeah, let's, um, car was a little loose, so we're going to kind of tighten it up a little bit. Let's, let's just tighten the car up a little bit. And it's time to do the Gatorade 125s. So here's the rules. Pretty much one race decides the inside row, and the other race decides the outside row. That's pretty much how it is. So if you win this one, or if you're on the inside row one, you win it, you get third if you didn't qualify first or second. And if you win the outside row one, the highest position you can get is fourth. So Here's the starting line. That's the rules. Starting out the field's basically cut in half. Looks like Gordon Bodine could be front row. Here we go, green flag. Oh boy. First race of the season. Terrible restart there. Terrible. Terrible restart. Once the car gets some momentum, we'll be good. There's the AIs. are kind of slowing up on the outside. Whoa, Bill Elliott coming down there. That could have been really bad. We, we qualify 36th, but we can improve our position if we can get a good run here. So each uh, position during your qualifying race is two positions on race day. So I'm hoping to get a top 20 at least because that'd be manageable. Well, they slipped up there a little bit. But if I get a top 20 uh, starting position, that would be, make the race a whole lot more easier because with 20 laps, I can, if I can just average, you know, a car or two per lap, I'll be at the front by the end. If I'm 36, the pack is going to be really split up. It's going to take all day to draft up there. Not to mention the cautions that might, you know, make the field a little bit more chaotic. Hard to get through. Plus, the AI generally have faster pit stops. Whoa, goodness, oh no, oh no. Junior's got a blown engine, I gotta get to the outside. I do not want to be stuck behind him. Well, so Dale Jr. already out of the 125. Looks like he was trying something that did not work. Meanwhile, we're coming to take lap three at Daytona. 12th right now. Looking to get 11th. Following Robbie Gordon. So far, so good. The car is still really loose. You can't tell. It's like kind of twitchy. Feels like it's kind of a seesaw a little bit. If you were at like a track in Atlanta or Texas, that'd be really bad. Here at Daytona, the car generally keeps its composure. Side looking. Oh boy. Get a run. Can we get a run? Oh, car really loose there. Got four out of five. Gang on Bodine here, but he's slowing up. Dang it. Biffled on the inside. Gotta run this Ford up there right now. 46 beating a bumper off back there. Here comes Ricky Rudd, the 28. There we go. So we're on the 26. And try to get around Biffle here. This race is almost over, so I can get 10th. That should be 20th. At least somewhere around there, 25th, 20th, somewhere around there. So I'm not sure. Um, who qualified on the pole? I think Gordon was one of the top two, top two. So I'm not sure. We'll have to see how it plays out. We might go to get ninth in this 125. We can get around the 23. Side looking, not there. Here comes Labani and Rudd both behind me. Like a little bit of blocking, maybe. Good run off one of two. Side by side down the back straightaway. Terry getting antsy back there. There we go. Ninth place. Last lap. I might want to adjust the car a little bit. It is still pretty loose. And that's going to be really dangerous in pack racing. So this is a good opportunity to kind of build on a setup. We will come home ninth today. 
good run for the Sitco Ford. We're starting 17th. Mark Martin taking the W. This is the kind of finish the paint. Let's see. 